Good morning, Victory people. Call the street Victory people. Yep. Good morning. We are so excited to be here this week. This is our first opportunity to preach as a couple on stage. Yep. We feel so honored by our lead pastor, Pastor Matt, to give us this opportunity and and share some some goodness. Yep. Yo. It's all good. It's all good. So this week we're gonna talk about expectation. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about perspective, and we're gonna talk a little bit about judgment as well. Yep. That's good stuff. So who out there online watching us right now knows that what you preach or you teach, you typically are gonna get challenged on. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so this past month or so, since we found out that we were gonna be preaching and getting to have this massive opportunity, mm -hmm. we, we started getting the challenges <laughs> of our teaching. More so me on the judgment side. Mm -hmm. For, for me, it's more like if I'm walking into Walmart or going to the gym and you see somebody that's, you know, maybe dressed a little, a little different and you're, you know, these thoughts kind of creep in a whole bunch of them and, and you kind of start telling yourself you're, you're kind of more normal than that person. <laughs> and we know that's not true. No, nope. we know that's not true. And it doesn't sound like it's in line with what God speaks over us nope. in scripture so I don't want that coming in my head. Yeah. So we got to shut that out. Yeah. You got to shut that out. That's right. And it, it, it's challenging. And what, what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say to you guys that are watching, prepare yourselves this week to be challenged. Yeah. This teaching will challenge you. So take out, take out your phones, take some notes, notebooks. You're going to retain more if you write it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're going to retain a whole lot more if you tell it to somebody else because we're not meant to be a reservoir. Mm -hmm. We're meant to be a river. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> so with all of that goodness, we promise it's not all challenge. So we'll right. get into our first clip. So the first clip that we chose um, to base off of is the very first clip in the movie where we see Henry and Ida, the big parent dinosaurs, uh, getting ready for their three eggs to hatch. It's so exciting. <laughs> you know, they're very excited. And Libby comes out, and she's adventurous, and mm -hmm. she's smart, and she's immediately curious of her surroundings. And then comes Buck. Good old Buck. <laughs> like a blaze of glory. You know, he's yeah. running around. He's hitting everything with a stick. <laughs> and then there's the last egg. She's and this massive sucker. Yep. Yeah. It's, you know, it's the biggest of the three. And Henry and Ida are full of anticipation for their big warrior kid. Yep. You know, he'll be the strongest and the biggest of them all. Yeah. You know, and they have expectations like any parent would. Totally. And then little Arlo comes out. A little mini man. <laughs> you know, he's small and he's timid and he's really shy of his surroundings. He doesn't want to come out of his egg. Yeah. And we immediately see that disappointment on Henry and Ida's face. Mm. You know, before the kids run out to the farm, they've dealt with that. Um, and Ida says to the kids, this is our farm and we'll take care of it together. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. And... This this movie, I, I love how in line it is with the story of David and, and specifically David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. So we're going to open this up in First Samuel 16, 7 and 11 to 12. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, mm -hmm. for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. Mm -hmm. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Yeah, that's so true. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Yeah. There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and a handsome features, <laughs> much like your husband, uh -huh. which is me. I couldn't so. agree more. <laughs> <laughs> I married up. And <laughs> then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. Yeah. You know. Wow. There's so much to dig into in that scripture. Yeah. I love it so much. That's um, 
But to give everybody some context into exactly what's happening there, Samuel um, was the prophet that God told to find a new king and mm. anoint him. So he told Samuel to go to Bethlehem and to find one of Jesse's eight sons. And when Samuel gets there, he's only presented seven sons. Wow. And of course, you know, Jesse wants to present the sons that he thinks would make a good king. So he sends forth his warrior soldier sons that, you know, are just solid muscle that are like supposed to be these like, you know, amazing men. Yeah. And totally Samuel... work out like seven days a week. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and Samuel, remembering what God had told him, says, do you have do you have another son? Hmm. Because, you know, he was told to look at the heart, not the wow. outward appearance. So that brings us to our first point, which is that our expectations can limit our outcome. Foo, you smart. <laughs> so Arlo's parents put a huge expectation on him before he was even born, you know, because of the size of his egg. Um, they judged the size of his calling by what they could see instead mm. of what they couldn't. Right. So when Arlo hatched smaller than the rest of his siblings, you could see that disappointment on his parents' faces. Mm. You know, it was very clear that they were seeing those expectations that they had for their son and they were seeing those die in front of them wow. instead of him being able to live up to that. Wow. Well, with all that said, mm -hmm. I would I would probably add... Don't let your emotions control your expectations. That's good. Yeah? Yeah, don't let your emotions control your expectation. This, this ties right into judging others. Exactly what we were just talking about. Like, how often do you see somebody that looks different, as we said, and instantly you think, you think something negative? And how about, how about this? Okay, this is what I do. This is what I've mm -hmm. been working on. It's been working for me. Mm -hmm. And I like trying, I like trying messing with the methods a little bit, right? This is part of our culture. And so how about we flip the flow and we take ourselves back to kindergarten and we train ourselves to count to three and say something nice. Even if it is just in your head, it's just yeah. things you're thinking, changing in your head, do that and watch your mindset reset. That's good. You can tell you're married to someone who teaches kindergarten. Yeah, I know. You're pretty great. <laughs> so I love that when, you know, when Samuel went to go find the new king um, and God told him to look at the heart of the man and not his outward appearance, mm -hmm. you know, and that's exactly what you're saying is that when we let our emotions guide our response and guide our judgments, we're not judging the same way God judges, totally. which is exactly the scripture we had just read, right? Yeah. It's, we don't judge the same way God judges. We're judging purely on what we see outwardly, you know? Right. And this leads us to limiting the outcome of that opportunity or even limiting our own change wow. and what God can do through us in that moment. That's so good. So that leads us right into our second clip. Cool. <laughs> which is where we see Henry and Ida put their mark on the corn silo at the farm. So the corn silo is a huge representation of their farm. You know, it, mm. it's what holds all their corn, all their food for the winter. It's you life know? and death. It's life and death. Yeah. You know, and uh, so when they're putting their marks on the corn silo, they're telling the kids that to earn their mark, they need to do something big for something bigger than themselves. Mm. So immediately, of course, we see all the kids, Buck, Libby, and Arlo, get to work doing their chores on the farm like good farm kids. Yep. <laughs> that's how so, we both grew up, so we know what that's like. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so because of his strength and his hard-headedness, Buck was chosen to clear the field. So he's picking up stones. He's, you know, he's clearing up um, any twigs and, and trees and all that kind of stuff. And that's his natural strength. Right. You know, and his parents are right at his side each clip, mm -hmm. cheering him on, giving him encouragement. Just like any good parents would do, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so we see the same for Libby. You know, because of her wit and her obvious genius, she was put to work getting the fields ready for seeding. Right. So rain or shine, her parents are there cheering her on. So cool. So good. And this goes on until Buck and Libby earn their mark. You wow. know, they've done something big. That'd be like, that'd be a huge feeling of self like self pride really yeah i'd be like i'd be ecstatic yeah it's honoring it's really Gives honoring. You confidence yeah yeah so throughout this journey though we also see arlo in the background 
and you know he's the timid one like we said and he was put to work in a job that he was afraid of getting chased by the cluck cluck chickens yep yeah so he's being laughed at by his siblings as he runs away afraid of the chickens you know they're chasing him when he's meant to be feeding them and his father's standing on the sidelines saying he'll get there but he's Mm. not at his side like he was with buck and libby wow you know and this this all comes to a head of um you know, Buck is making fun of Arlo for the last time. Yeah. And Arlo's just had enough of being overlooked and being bullied and being laughed at. Totally. And he says, I don't want that dumb Mark anyway. Mm. And he walks away from his family. Wow. That's a rough place to be in, too. Yeah, it's very... Being, like, obviously, he wants the Mark. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty clear. But being at such a, yeah. a low place that you're, you can't even... You know nobody's viewing you high enough highly enough to to accomplish something like this yeah that's rough it's very rough yeah our second point is our perspective changes our progress yeah it's really good again we're gonna we're gonna follow the story of of david here in first samuel 17 26 to 28 and it says david asked the men standing near him what will be done for the man who kills the philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Mm. They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, this is what will be done for the man who kills him. When Elab, David's oldest son, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down here and whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Yeah, which is That's like, that's pretty rough, man. (laughs) His brother's got some real hatred towards him. I've had some disagreements with my brother, but that's just... Sibling rivalry on another level. Yeah, that's just hurtful, man. (laughs) So what we see Eliab saying to David is David had come down actually to bring his brothers on the front line of this battle with, you know, the Philistines, the giants came to bring them food. Actually, he was being nice all along. (laughs) And we see his brother, you know, underestimate and overlook him by saying, you know, with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? Right. When David was overlooking a flock of sheep of at least a hundred, and right. he was protecting them from being attacked by the animals in the wilderness. Yeah, he like took out a bear and a lion. Yeah. I mean, like that's not that's not low key. No. That's not a low key thing to do. <laughs> I if I took out a bear or a lion, I'm I'm telling people. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's cool. It's very cool. <laughs> yeah. Right? So we can see with David that his brothers and his dad overlooked him when he wanted to fight Goliath, you know, mm. saying that he's not brave or strong enough um, to do it. And the same happened with Arlo. You wow. know, his parents gave him the easy jobs, even though he was aware he could do more and he was meant for something else. They limited him because of their judgment of him. Wow. Yeah. That's something. I think a really good way to maybe correct this is to, to change the angle that we, that we tend to look at it. So mm-hmm. change the angle of how we look at it. Your, your expectations come from your perspective. So if we get a bigger perspective, by, we, we get that by getting closer to God. Nothing measures up to him. Mm-hmm. That's right. And it's not that easy to make your, your mark in life. We don't, yeah. Some of us are still trying to figure out what that mark is. Yeah. And we, we are the hands and the feet of God's kingdom. Yeah. He uses us as a vessel for change. Yeah. And if we don't take the step to initiate change, we are only limiting the way in which God can actually use us for growth. Yeah. And you got to do something big for something bigger than yourself, which is said in that movie. Yeah. It's really cool because a lot of these cartoons (laughs) filtered correctly. I mean, this, they're they're all Bible stories. It's awesome. (laughs) Some intense veggie tales. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I think it's so true that, um, we can't, do anything when we're focused on what we'll get out of it right and you know i love philippians 2 3 and it says do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit rather in humility value others above yourselves Mm, that's good i think the the whole valuing how we value people how we how we see them um 
it's it's so key to to living a healthy life too yeah i think having expectations on people is healthy like obviously a healthy level having a healthy level of expectation on yourself if we don't have any expectation on ourselves, then we're just gonna end up sitting doing nothing all day and we're just we're not using what god has given us right yeah but i would say that if we have high expectations of ourselves and we have high expectations of others then we need to and and if we have that with a low work ethic we can expect mediocre results yep that's true right so we need to make sure that our work ethic is still we like keep building it keep working on it keep finding things to grow your work ethic yeah that's really good yeah and we have a god that that works on a I would say a hope based system. Mm. At least that's how I view it. Adam and Eve, I mean, <laughs> he knew they were going to mess up. He knew that that apple was just do good. <laughs> you know, he knew he made it. He made just a juicy red looking apple. I bet just some good looking piece of fruit. And, and yep. he knew what they were going to do, Yeah, but, but that hoped. didn't stop him. He, he hoped. Otherwise. He hoped. He hoped they would make a different, they would make the right choice. He hoped to live in heaven with them mm-hmm. forever, like, or the Garden of Eden. And he hoped for that. Yeah. Um, they just, they had, they made, they had that freedom. Yeah. And they made that choice. Mm-hmm. And I would say that God, he definitely sees our, our potential yeah. before we realize it. And yeah. before we realize it ourselves is Henry Arlo's dad, as he looks at him, failing his chores each day, he keeps repeating to to his wife, he'll get there. Yeah. And that to me is symbolic to, to God. It is. Being looking at us every time that we make a mistake, every time that we're this close to getting to our next level, and we just make a stupid decision. And he's like, you know what? You'll get there. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. You'll get there. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. You know, and, and going off of that, you know, is when when we believe in ourselves, you know, we, we have that. And when we when we lean into God, mm-hmm. we can we can fight back anything. You know, and when others stop believing in us, we can fight through that when we lean into God and we lean into our own confidence. But it's only when we give up on ourselves and when we stop trying that we actually fail, Mm. you know, when we keep trying, we're getting closer to success. But when we speak over ourselves that I can't, or I'm weak, or I'm a failure, that's when the enemy gets a hold of us. That's like the whole I am statement thing. Yeah. Speaking, speaking life or death, right? Yeah. I am power of the tongue. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. You know, and so when, when the, when the enemy gets a hold of us, that's when damage gets done, you know? And so I love, you know, thinking of Thomas Edison, uh, he made 10,000 prototypes of the electric wow. light bulb that really? did not work <laughs> before oh, he man. made one that worked, you know, and then he, you know, improved on it. And he's quoted saying that I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that don't work. <laughs> and that's a great perspective. That's so cool. You know, so jumping into our next clip that we decided Sweet. to use It does go a bit ahead in the story, so we'll fill you in. Um, So after all the trouble at home and on the farm, Mm -hmm. an accident happened, leaving Arlo's father dead, which, you know, of course hurt him. Yeah. And Arlo ends up getting swept away in the river, you know, and swept away from the farm and into the wilderness with nothing but this little critter. It's actually a little boy that he has named Spot. Wow. And, you know, and they're trying to find their way home, back to the farm. And that's when they meet Butch and his two <laughs> 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 and his two kids. And they're this T-Rex cowboy family. They're so cool. They're very cool. Yeah. And they offer to show him how to get home. Wow. So in this clip that, um, that we chose, it's about Butch telling Arlo about the time that he fought three crocodiles by himself. Wow. And Arlo is just stunned by how fearless Butch must have been. But he's actually completely wrong. Yeah. Man, that brings us straight into point three. We have to walk through the fear. Yeah, so good. Wow. So true. And 
that's what this clip is all about. Right. So when Butch is, you know, this big, scary, respected T-Rex cowboy telling a story about killing three crocodiles by himself, yeah. Arlo is seeing this as something he'd never be able to achieve, something he'd never be able to do. He's too weak. He's too cowardly. Mm. And, you know, because of that fear that's been instilled in him, he he's afraid to he's afraid to do that. And so he says, I'll never be afraid again. And wow. I love Butch's response. It's my <laughs> favorite response in the whole movie. Mine too. It says, if you're not afraid of a croc biting you in the face, you're not alive. Oh, man. Fear is like Mother Nature. You can't run from it. You can't get rid of it. But you can get through it. Wow. And that just... That just makes me think of Proverbs 29, 25 that says fear and intimidation is a trap that holds you back. Mm. But when you have placed your confidence in the Lord, you'll be seated in the high place. Wow. That's cool. Good stuff. This, this is, this is a kind of a big turning point for Arlo. It is. Yeah. Like, this is a big deal. After all his adventures and everything he's accomplished, he's still holding on to the expectations and insecurities that he was raised with. Yeah. Right. He was, he was a product of his environment. Yeah. But now he's learning to let it go and get through it. And in Matthew six thirty four, it says, therefore do not worry about tomorrow yeah. for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I love that verse and I love it so much. <laughs> I, I got like, I kind of got it tattooed on my arm. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's a good verse. It's, there, it's so true. It's there for a long time. Yeah. Like forever. So I believe as a future father, our baby, we're going to get to know the, <laughs> the gender here in the next week and a half. Yep. This is so exciting. Yeah. I'm so excited <laughs> to do this with you and, um, yeah, I just, I believe as a future father, as a coach in theater, that it's our job to activate, motivate, and celebrate our kids. Yeah. And we want to activate the calling within them by speaking truth and love. We want to motivate them to build their confidence in who they are in Christ yeah. and what he has instilled in them to do. Yeah. And we want to celebrate them because we know what gets celebrated Gets, gets repeated. repeated. So make sure they know if they did something on culture or on mission, something that you guys hold true to your family and your in your culture, just make sure that they're celebrated yeah. for that. That's a big deal. It's a big deal. And going on that, I think when, when we choose to live in fear yeah. and let it overflow us, it eliminates room for faith to be. That's good. Yeah. They can't coincide. They can't coincide together. And if you let fear breed, your faith is going to recede. That's good. Yeah. You should repeat that. All right, I will. <laughs> if you let your fear breed, your faith will recede. That's so good. Yeah. That's really good. Thanks, babe. So <laughs> getting into clip four, Ooh. this is, you know, the final clip. It's actually, you know, the final clip um, in the whole movie. And we thought it was really powerful. Yeah. So in this scene, we see Arlo, you know, after his adventure and, you know, getting to know the cowboy T-Rexes. And yeah. um, we see him confidently walking over this fence that he once struggled um, for, to cross over. You know, it's right. the fence that's the barrier between the wilderness and his family farm. Yeah. And, you know, as he's walking closer to his mother, Ida, she thinks that it's Henry, her husband, who's mm. passed away because of the confidence that he's projecting, you know, right. he's walking with his head held high and that's crazy. only for her to realize that it's actually her son. So wow. once Arlo's home, he tells his family, his story and what he had done and he earns his mark on the corn silo. And that's because he's finally done something larger than himself. That's so honoring. Yeah. Wow. That takes us into point four. It takes faith to overcome. Yeah. So the fence is something that really, it, it stood out to me. It was a big yeah, it deal. Did. It was like, yeah. it was really, it's like not emotional or anything. It was just really cool. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's this fence that is between safety and danger. Yeah. And he had, he had to make the choice. Earlier in the movie, we didn't talk about this clip, but earlier in the movie, he made a choice with his dad to walk over this fence. Yeah. 
and he struggled and he could barely do it and he was terrified and he couldn't swallow the fear yeah. and he was just trembling. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to walk over fences in, in our lives, right? And they tend to look really high yeah. and sometimes higher, a lot of times higher than they really are. And I would say that that's just the enemy because he, he being, being his, you know, his joker self, he likes <laughs> to pretend. And uh, I, he's, he's acts so much bigger than he is. He acts yeah. so much, he tries to be so much bigger than our God. And it's just, it's, it's smoke and lights. Yeah. It really is. And our God is so much bigger than anything he can throw at us. It's, you know, when we, yeah. when we move forward and we progress and we move past these things, it's not a new devil. It's just a new level. That's good. Right? That's just really a good. new level. Yeah. And going through this, this gives us the tools. This gives us the tools yeah. to progress and take him out. Because really, when he looks this big, he's still just a serpent on the ground under our feet that we get to crush him. Yep, that's right. Yeah. So on this clip, Ida thinks that Arlo is Henry, as you said, mm -hmm. from far away. Which is like, I can't imagine the emotions that she would be going through in that moment. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah. And we didn't add this clip, but Henry had said to Arlo before he died that you are me and more. And I believe that this is Arlo living into that role. You are me and more yeah. has to be one of the most like that. That's incredible for a father to say that to a son. You are me and more. He believes that that's where we saw Henry believing in his son. Yeah. 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 He wanted his son to be better than he was. Yeah. I, it's, it's easy to become a product of our environment and Arlo was looked upon as a bit weaker and smaller. So, um, yeah, and smaller. So he couldn't do as much. The reality is if, if we are in a place that we want to do more and we want to be more then we need to move to a place that is more. That's really good. David could have stayed on the farm taking care of his sheep limiting his potential, but he knew he was more than a shepherd of sheep, but a shepherd of men. Yeah, that's so true. So he put faith in God. He took a step in faith. And, like, the amount of fear <laughs> that, this, that this little man must have had. <laughs> like, he's a shredded, he's a shredded, shredded little man, right? He's a big dude. He's, like, buff. I, that's how I picture him. If he took out a bear and a lion, I mean, he's probably pretty strong. Okay. Anyways, um... He would have had to have, like, eaten all that fear, mm -hmm. tucked it way down low, showed a whole lot of confidence. Yeah. Strutting his stuff. Stepping up to Goliath. Stepping up to Goliath. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he took, he took the biggest man down. He took the smallest man taking the biggest man down. That usually doesn't happen that way. Nope. That is not how that usually goes down. But because our God is so much bigger, yeah. it was like... No issue. Yeah. You know, and so Arlo and David are, are so much alike. Yeah. And so when Arlo does go home and we see him, you know, place his mark on the silo, he places it right in the middle between his parents. Wow. And this is the first time that his family has actually outwardly recognizes his capability mm. and that he had actually achieved something. You know, this is the first time they'd done that. And, you know, that's exactly what uh, the verse says as well, is that when we step out in faith with Christ... We're given a seat in a high place. Wow. You know? And God recognizes the relationship that we build with him and the work that we do for his kingdom. Yeah. And he multiplies the fruits of that labor from earth in heaven. That's cool. Yeah. So in first Samuel seventeen, forty eight to fifty one, yeah. it says, As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone. He hurled it with his sling and it hit the Philistine in the forehead. Mm -hmm. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone for he had no sword, yeah. which is like not so. That's yeah. crazy. It's terrifying. He had no armor, no sword, but he did have the full armor of God. Yeah. So I guess you can't say he had no armor. Yeah. That's something. <laughs> then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his sheath, and David used it to kill him and cut off his own head. That's a lot of confidence there, too, because if he knew that he wasn't already dead, 
He and walked up to he him. He walked straight up to him. Yeah. He could have been faking. Yeah. That's something. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. Yep. Yeah. They hightailed ha. it out of there. Hightail. They ran. Man, alive. You know, and I think that this is like, this is the big win. This is the big moment where David proves himself. Because yeah. his brothers were too too scared to do that as well. Wow. You know, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't even go near Goliath. No. Yeah. So I think just like Arlo, you know, David got his win when he stepped through the fear, got a new perspective, and yeah. put his confidence in Christ. And that's exactly what we all need to do as well. That's so good. So our takeaway today is little faith equals big results couldn't agree more that's so cool well guys we want to everybody online and we just want to make sure that we give you the the opportunity to have a relationship with this jesus that is so much bigger than us so much bigger than us in so many ways and uh and so great and and when we come up on these hurdles these judgmental thoughts or uh, people looking down on us. He's so much. He's so much more, and we have a father who who looks so highly upon us. And we want to make sure that everybody has that chance to have a relationship with the God that we know. And uh, yeah. So if you, if everybody could just bow their heads, close their eyes. Unless you're driving. Unless you're driving, fold your hands. Um, just repeat after me, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Uh, we just we love you so much. We admit that we have messed up. We believe that you died on the cross and rose three days later. We choose to follow you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for for joining us today. Yeah, it was a great time. And if you guys um, took something away from this message or, you know, felt that if something spoke to you, please drop it in the comments below and let us know, you know, how you're going to walk with this message for the next week and, and how you're going to let it impact you for the next week before our next, our next message and share this with someone that you think needs it yes. as well. You know, someone that might be overlooking themselves or, yeah. you know, being overlooked by somebody else, you know, share it with yeah. them, share it on Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Yeah. Messages Messenger. Are, <laughs> messages are meant to be shared, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Share this message. Have a great week, guys. Have a great week, guys. What an amazing service. Thank you so much for joining us today here at College Street. My name is Stephanie, and I'm here to let you know where we go from here. Here at College Street, we have an acronym. It's CGI, so it's super easy to remember all of your next steps. So C stands for CONNECT. And you can check out our website for more information on how you can do that. But throughout the summer, we have a couple of connect groups that are going. And as well, we have rise nights that happen every single month. They're an awesome way to meet with other people on our serve teams and just learn a little bit more about the church. As well, we have had barbecues going on every month throughout the summer. So those are another great way that you can connect with other people in the church. The next part of our next steps is grow. One of the ways you can do that is through reading your Bible daily. The YouVersion Bible app is an awesome way to do that and to just stay in the Word every single day. It's completely free. You can download that anytime and even go to our website at wherepeoplematter.church to do that. Next, I want to talk to you guys about serving. Here at College Street, we have so many different opportunities for you to serve and to be a part of what is happening here every week. So message us and let us know where you would like to be able to do that. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about in the grow part of things is giving, partnering with us. And the verse I wanted to share with you guys is 2 Corinthians 9, 7 to 8. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. We never want to put pressure on people when it comes to giving, but we also don't want you to miss out on the abundant blessings that you will receive from God if you give towards his kingdom. There's going to be a number of ways that you can give will show up on the screen, but I'm just going to pray over the offering right now. Dear God, 
Thank you so much for this opportunity that we've had today to have this experience with you. I pray that you will be with those people who have decided that they're going to give today and that you will bless them abundantly like you have promised that you will in your word and that you will bless this offering as well. We thank you so much for it. In Jesus' name, amen. The last thing that I want to talk to you guys about under GROW is the internship program that we have coming up this fall. There are classes that are going on in the evenings and there's only a limited amount of space. So if you want to be a part of that, check out our website again, wherepeoplematter.church. Click on the internship tab and you'll find out more information on there on how you can be a part of that. Lastly, I want to talk to you guys about inviting. And I know you can think of friends and family members that would be so impacted by it. So share the experience with them, share all of the links, and if they can come in person, every Sunday we have two services, 10.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. You guys don't want to miss this. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week.